Study Designer. A CLG study is composed of two parts, a group and an analytic method. You've already learned about the group, one group in particular called a cohort, in which each member of the cohort has an index date. That index date connects up to an analytic method, and a study is created when you have both a group and an analytic method. You can have a group such as male diabetics and female diabetics, each member having his own index date, and these are all connected to an analysis of death in one year. So the method is look at elapsed time for mortality up to a year out. You could have another method, which would be a readmission method. And there again, you'd apply that readmission to male diabetic admissions and female diabetic admissions to see who was readmitted in a year's time. Both the groups and the analytic method are reusable and shareable so that both you and your colleagues can immediately benefit from other people's work. There are three study methods in clinical looking glass, three analytic patterns. There's time to outcome, and in this method, the system measures the amount of time elapsed from each patient's index day until some defined outcome. It then compares the amount of time elapsed to the outcome in the two groups. There is a list method. It generates a spreadsheet with the attribute value of the events that were the index event, and it also allows you to build columns with attribute values of other events related to the first event. In the spreadsheet, you see attributes of the cohort. You also can see attributes of events forced into a relationship with the cohort member. And the last analytic pattern is time and range. It summarizes the amount of time spent in defined categories of a continuous variable. So for example, what percentage of time do the patients have their INR in the range of two to three? What percentage of time were they zero to two? What percentage of time were they in a range greater than three? All these methods we will review in a little while.